Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today I'm going to demonstrate how I go about processing an image that is heavily backlit. What's prompting me to do this video is an email I received from a relatively new photographer who told me that they're trying to photograph a lighthouse at sunset. And the lighthouse, of course, is coming out really dark. And when they expose for the lighthouse or the land in front of the lighthouse, the sky gets blown out. And they were, they were asking me how they could deal with this situation. Well, we're going to process this image. Uh, this was taken at Virginia Beach a few years ago. Those of you familiar with Virginia Beach know that on the boardwalk, they have this huge sculpture of Poseidon. I took this at sunrise. This was actually the first image I took as I was gauging the exposure. And this one is really underexposed. It is backlit and it's really dark. Now, what I'm going to show you really isn't Lightroom specific. You could do this in any post-processing application. I just happen to be in Lightroom. Now, the only thing done to this image so far is lens corrections. That's it. Otherwise, it's right out of camera. That's the way it looks. Usually, what I like to do with any application, Lightroom or anything, is I like to crop right away and or straighten the image if it needs it. In this case, this image is a bit crooked. So I am going to go to the crop tool. I'm going to get the angle tool and I want to straighten it. And you can see this line here is in my way of the rule of thirds. So I'm just going to hit the O key to just get a different overlay so I could see better uh, the horizon line because I want to draw right across the horizon line and straighten out that image. So that's done. I'll close the crop tool. If I keep hitting the O key, by the way, I'd cycle through all those different overlays until I get back to the rule of thirds. All right. Now, what do I do? Well, obviously when it's backlit, uh, the subject usually is going to be very dark. And what I'll do is I'll jump right to the shadows right away and I'll move that up. In this case, I have to move it all the way up. And when I move it all the way up, it still isn't bright enough. Then what I do is I go directly to exposure and I just up the exposure until I don't even worry about the bright parts, meaning the sky. I just up it until I feel that the subject, in this case, the sculpture is properly exposed. Looks good. Then what I do is I go to highlights and I'll pull those down. So I'm bringing that detail back into the sky. And Really, with just those three sliders, I have a proper exposure now. Then what I'll do is I'll get a white and black point. Uh, various applications have different ways to do this. The way I like to do it in Lightroom is I hold the Option key in on a Mac. It's Alt key on a PC. When I click on the whites slider, the screen will turn black. I'll move this to the right until I see some colors bleed through. And then I'll just back it off till those colors go away. In this case, it's a sunset, so of course it's going to kind of bleed through very quickly. Similarly for blacks, I'll hold the Option key in again. It's Alt key on Windows. Click on that. You can see it's white. You can see I have a little color bleeding through already. I like a little bit uh, more color bleed through. That means I'm clipping those shadows. I like to clip the shadows a little bit in my images. I think it just gives it a little more tonal depth. Then what I'll do is I like to do color next. And in this case, I'll jump down to the HSL color slider and I'll go to the saturation tab. And of course, I want to like increase the oranges a little bit, the saturation of the oranges, increase the saturation of the yellows, jump over to luminance, and I might make the yellows a little darker, oranges a little brighter maybe, bring the blues down, make those a little darker as well as far as luminance values are concerned. Then I'll go up to the basic tab and I'll move the texture slider, the clarity slider, and if I need vibrance or saturation, I'll add that as well. But it's pretty colorful the way it is. And that's pretty much the way it looked when I was there. I will go down to the detail um, tab, zoom in. I have considerable amount of noise. Um, so we'll move this noise reduction. I may, because I prefer to use uh, Denoise AI by Topaz Labs, I would probably send it to Denoise at this point. But we could leave it there. Stay in Lightroom for this right now. Uh, I'll mask out the sharpening so it's not affecting the sky, but holding in the option key on my Mac. Move this to the right. Everywhere that is white is being sharpened. Everywhere that is black is not. So I just want to sharpen the edges, you know, the transition areas around the statue. So that's good. Not applying sharpening to the sky means I won't be enhancing the noise that is already in the sky. So that's what I like to do here. Now, whenever you have an image that is heavily backlit, 
be um, very aware of chromatic aberration. It happens quite often, and you'll find it on hard edges, like in here. And you can see that um, it's, it's actually pretty well controlled. There might be just a little bit. Usually chromatic aberration is just a really thin line at a real high contrast edge like this of green or purple sometimes, and you could do that in lens corrections. You could see that I already removed chromatic aberration, but I could go to the manual tab and uh, dial it in a little better. That's beyond the scope of this video. I do have a video that goes into extreme detail how to remove chromatic aberration. I'll have that linked in the description below this video and in the top right hand corner you'll see a flag pop out if you're watching this on YouTube. All right, I'm pretty much done. I'll go to the effects and I like to add a little darker vignette to bring it in. And there's before and there's after and there's before and there's after. So that's how I go about processing an image that is heavily backlit. And the key is go to the shadow slider first, move it to the right. Sometimes you'll have an image and all you need to do is move that to the right. For example, I have this image, which is of course the same shot. And if I go to shadows now and I move that to the right, you can see that pretty much brought it back. I don't have to touch the exposure slider at all. But sometimes you'll have an image like we had here, where then after I move that shadow slider to the right, I'll have to up exposure quite a bit and then come in and bring highlights down a lot to bring that detail back in the sky. So that really is the key. So that's it. Again, you could do this in any application, not just Lightroom, although I gave you a lot of Lightroom specific keyboard shortcuts and things. Um, you know, hopefully you could translate that over to the application you use. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.